Hi, this is Michelle Sullivan. I'm at the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. And this morning we have Dr. Bernadine Simprich. She presented some data here this morning uh, that suggests that there could be other um, factors that influence the development of chemo brain, the uh, cognitive dysfunction that a lot of women experience when they're going through their chemotherapy treatment. So Dr. Simprich, I think you had 97 women in a functional MRI study. That's correct. And there were three groups of women that we actually tested. The first group were women who were receiving adjuvant chemotherapy for breast cancer, and then two comparison groups. A group of women uh, being treated with local radiotherapy, but mm -hmm. no chemotherapy, and then a uh, control group, uh, age-matched women, uh, who did not have breast cancer, but who had a negative screening mammogram. Mm -hmm. uh, we tested these women before the start of any adjuvant treatment, so it would be before chemotherapy or before radiation therapy, and then again, at an interval of about five months, which coincided with the period of about one month after the completion of chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. But before women started any subsequent radiation therapy, which they might, and before they started endocrine therapy, which they might. Mm -hmm. During the memory task, you saw some decreased activation in an area of the brain that's exquisitely involved in working memory. That's correct, and that was before any adjuvant treatment, and it was in both patient groups. It was women awaiting chemotherapy, women awaiting radiation therapy, compared with the controls. Mm -hmm. And actually, the women who were awaiting chemotherapy showed the lowest level of activation, with the radiation therapy group falling in between them and the and controls. The, controls. Mm -hmm. the women were not able to recruit the neural activation in this area of the brain mm -hmm. sufficiently to be able to do the task, especially in the higher or more difficult conditions. Mm -hmm. And so are, are you suggesting that they're preoccupied with thoughts of other things going on in their life, perhaps related to their treatment? Well, this is, I think, a fair question because our earlier findings showed that worry before any treatment, the level of worry actually interfered in the way mm -hmm. that you were suggesting, a distraction, interfered with their ability to complete the working memory task in the scanner. And this was across patient groups. It was actually across all of our groups. Mm -hmm. The higher the level of worry, the more it interfered right. with the task in the scanner. And worry was related to fatigue. And that's where we hypothesize that fatigue, which is often linked to worry and anxiety, might contribute then additionally mm -hmm. to cognitive problems that women might experience over time, especially if fatigue becomes cumulative. Right. Well, this kind of raises two questions for me. Um, the first is, are you concerned at all that physicians or families of women on hearing something like this might interpret this as saying, well, you see, if you would just stop worrying about things, mm -hmm. then, you would, then you would do better, then you wouldn't be so tired, then you wouldn't forget things? I think that that is definitely a worry, for me, talking <laughs> about worry. No, I think it's a concern that we are aware that these cognitive problems do exist. They have a biological basis, whether it is worry biologically interfering with cognitive function or fatigue biologically interfering, and that there may then be a compounded effect mm -hmm. by chemotherapy. So it's not as simple as saying don't worry, because when you tell people don't worry, they just worry more. <laughs> yeah.